You girls need some more room, huh? And Rodney. You're looking good, Rodney. Let's see what we can do about that. What do you think, Zoe? Zoe, what do you think? Hey everybody, Rick here, Arizona High Desert Homestead. This is an update, and also, I, I know I've been talking about it in so many of my videos that I need to add on to this. I've had this trench dug for months, so. I've got four by fours down in the bottom of the trench. I got it down about 12 inches, concreted in. I've got them all around here, okay. Then I'm gonna take two by fours, and run one on the bottom and then probably one in the middle well on this section will just be on the top because i'm going to put a door in here um, and uh, then i'm going to put uh hardwire or hard yeah hardware cloth <laughs> hardware cloth at the bottom down in the trench and then i will fill it zoe get away from those chickens i will beat your ass all right, and the reason for the hardware cloth is I haven't had any problems with snakes, but you never know, and I'd rather be safer than sorry. I'll have to put some hardware cloth around that small, small run there. But yeah, I did this a couple days ago. I had some bags of concrete I had to hurry up and use up. They just been covered by a tarp, and luckily we have pretty low humidity here, so stuff didn't go bad or you know clump up too much so yeah i got to get the other top of that that coop going and then i'll just for now just cut a hole in that so they can just kind of decide where they want to go for right now so and then i've got a uh, regular chicken wire that i will put on top of the hardware cloth and then up higher and then i've got my shade cloth like that's over there the black stuff i'm going to be spreading that i might even put a couple more posts here in the middle actually yeah I forgot about that in the middle so I can run some 2 by 4 across to help drape that stuff over it and that'll just kind of protect them from the Sun but more importantly and the main reason kind of the only reason is to protect them from predators there's a lot of Hawks around here so yeah um, before I fill this in I know a lot of people are going to say, why didn't you use treated? Well, it's so dry here, it, it doesn't really matter. I got it in concrete. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my torch and I'm going to lightly burn it there for the rest of the trench depth. Lightly burn it. If I had some linseed oil, I'd put it on, but I do not have any linseed oil. A lot of people will use just use motor oil, just light, light enough on there. But I don't know if I want that around my chickens. Even though it wouldn't be enough to really do anything it would just preserve the wood so yeah I've been working on cleaning stuff up and uh, worrying about my little friend Bordis one of my rescue kitties he disappeared a couple days ago well, I'm fearing the worst but I'm trying to take my mind off of it so hey let me ask you guys out there last summer I bought like 200 cinder blocks off this lady and she had all this metal this is all top rail it's like one inch top rail maybe inch and a quarter i've got like 230 feet of this stuff it's really good solid top rail when I, you know what can i what can i do with this any ideas out there yeah i got all this metal from her um 200 cinder blocks oh god uh like 60 t-posts yesterday I sorted out all my t-posts six footers there eight footers there oddballs there so yeah i got quite a lot and then i also got a bunch of old galvanized roofing that i'm going to use for my raised beds and i'm going to do a video on that soon because it's already almost march so i got to get ready 
I might even do a little hoop over one of them so I can get some plants started early. But yeah, if anybody got any ideas, what would be a good project to use this stuff for? Like I said, I got at least 230 feet of it. All those sticks are 10 feet and I have like 22 of them. And then I got a bunch of shorter pieces. This I'm sure I can use for like a clothesline. This is you know, some good angle iron. There's a good two inch pipe here. So yeah, let me know what you think. I've got to get started on this. Go get the propane torch. And then start putting the two by fours in. Huh? Huh, girls? Hey, building your new fort. All right, we'll be back. Again, even with a crippled shoulder, upper arm. Uh, let's see, let's see what we've been up to. Building up that firewood supply there. I don't really want to use a lot of jur juniper uh, for burning in a fireplace inside. This stuff's really dirty, and it creates a lot of creosote. Um, and I. I do clean chimneys. I used to clean them up north, and I still have my tools. Um, so I'll burn some, but I'd rather get some hardwoods, like uh, also different hardwoods, like some oak and stuff like that, on the uh, state lands where you can get permits to get firewood. But if you've watched my videos, <laughs> you'll know I've done a lot right here. Check this out. I still got more to clean up. Getting there really, really nice. Organizing the lumber, that's all miscellaneous stuff. I'm gonna start building my raised beds like really soon. That used to be the compost bin area. The winds just toppled the crap out of it. I'm just gonna take it all apart. Um, I'm not gonna use compost bins. I'm just gonna have a pile and put some black plastic over it. So, picking up a bunch of dead wood all over the place. Alright. So, kind of wish I would have got more done here, but it is what it is. All that scrap stuff's going to come in so perfect. Alright, let's take a look. Oh, finally getting on this. As you can see, I burned the, uh, burned the bottom where the soil is going to touch it. Just help protect. I've got, I used little sections of 2x4, screwed them in. I have brackets, but I thought, you know, let's make the brackets last. And um, just screwed them in, then screwed the top rail, the rail on top of that. I'm going to run my hardware cloth all around. And then wherever it comes out the top, then I'll put a rail in there. And then I'm going to run, I have, uh, it's either five or six foot chicken wire. I think it's five foot. And then I'm going to run 
that all around. I need to put two more posts in the middle. And uh, to line up with those two over there and these two right here. And that way I can put another board on the coop there, right there. Because I need to string um, that shade cloth to keep predators out. The hawks. There's a lot of hawks around here. So, and I was looking, this dirt here is not bad at all. Instead of putting that back in the trench, I'm just going to put this in my pile that I used to do additives. And then I'm just going to get some of that stuff over there. Ooh, it's feeding time. Let's see here. Still got to put the doors on that. What's up, girls? Oh, yeah. Always act like they're starving. They're fed very well. You need to give them some more layer um, crumbles tomorrow. Yeah. So, I'll work on that more tomorrow. I got, we also worked on the kitchen a little bit today. Uh, working on that, so. Then I did some more mowing. Getting that stuff all down. I have multiple reasons that I'm doing that. Uh, it's looking really good. So I got some more cleanup. A lot of cleanup to do, but got a lot done this weekend. So I'll keep working on this. Hopefully by the end of the week I can have it done. I hope. So I gotta build a door over there on that side. Just a little out of one buys, you know, like one by fours. Huh, Zoe? Yeah. Still no sign of my my kitty Boris. He was a rescue cat. He, they, he just showed up, him and a little girl kitty, and she was so small, and he was like her protector. And uh, yeah, I'm really kind of taking that hard. So, all right, let's go start a fire. All righty. Now this is like some of my favorite times. Uh, I was having a nice fire. I missed this last summer, you know, because it was just hot. You know, too hot for a fire. I mean, later in the evenings, uh, it would have been fine. But I've noticed, or not noticed, since I've lived off grid now, um, it's going a little over 10 months, um, I go to bed very early. I'm like in tune with the sun. I get up with the sun, I go to bed with the sun. And unlike up north, you know, in the summer, uh, up in northwest Washington, you know, the fort, close to the 49th parallel, the days are a lot longer in the summer, but then they're a lot shorter in the winter than down here, where it's a little more balanced down here, and I like that, but I go to bed so damn early, sometimes 7 o'clock, sometimes like 6 o'clock, I'm like, oh crap, it's only 6 o'clock, you know, I just... I stay busy and I, I really enjoy it. I sleep a lot better. But so wanted to talk about uh, a little bit with what's going on in the world um, with all the threats from Russia and even activating their nuclear response, whatever. I can't even think of the right words right now, but I think. Probably for the first time in my life, you know, in the 80s, we had the Cold War going, but that wasn't that big. You know, it might have been, we just didn't know, who knows. But uh, we, there is, it's not with the, you know, without the, in the realm, it's within the realm of possibility of there being another world war if Putin keeps doing what he's doing. So what I'm going to do is start doubling down on what I need to do as far as being self-sufficient as much as possible. I'm gonna start working on my raised beds, building them so I can get the soils and all that set up in it so it's ready to grow. Build a little hoop house over it. I gotta work on my uh, root cellar that's over there. I've got to work on my underground greenhouse. Um, I'm even considering, I haven't really talked to anybody else in the immediate family about this, but on my North 40, uh, leasing certain sections uh, to like-minded people that I would get to know first, you know, and make sure it's going to be okay. And I'd have something in writing to protect me, protects them, you know, 
it's it's a possibility um, you know and if the world did turn to total crap like that well wouldn't even worry about writing something up I would just say hey this is where I'm at you know to certain people that really want to get off grid I know there's a lot of a lot of them out there um, yeah the future's not looking so good I guess nobody should have made fun of Mitt Romney when he said the oh the worst threat this century the beginning of the century was going to be from the Russians and Obama made fun of him that didn't age well for him aged well for Romney Romney was right but so I try not to follow the news but then I always do anyways that's the thing I like about being off grid everything is so far away but I think about all those kids there they don't have a chance a choice you know um, another thing I'm thinking on doing is building a Faraday cage for those of you that don't know Faraday cage protects sensitive electronics from EMPs EMP stands for electro electrical magnetic pulse they're most common from the Sun the Sun shoots them at earth all the time back in the 1850s they had a massive one that if they had one that scale that hit now our entire com communication grid electrical grid would be toast it would be toast and we'd be basically back to like living in the 1850s there wouldn't be any electricity going on now from all my research I could see that the solar panels and batteries for the most part maybe not the BMS part on the newer batteries will hold up okay to an EMP because we do get in a world war you never know I'd rather be prepared um, call me paranoid I don't care um, if there is an EMP that an enemy country does on a ballistic missile to cripple their enemy um, if you have a Faraday cage with some at least some electronics in there and put like a couple inverters some charge controllers stuff like that maybe even one of the EcoFlow rivers you know you can even make you know Faraday cage you can get an old microwave and that would be sufficient you know. but I'm thinking about building one putting it underground and I'm just want to look out for the future worry about my kids and my grandkids and everybody else's kids and grandkids everybody just wants to live in peace for God's sakes come on world's got enough problems you know that need all the act extra added headache to it so. but hey remember earlier in the video I showed you all that inch and it's inch and three-eighths I was close I said inch and a half I was only eighth of an inch off inch and three-eighths top rail um, has anybody used tried bending that before um, I mean I could try with a smaller piece I guess I do have a large pipe bender but Maybe I can build some kind of hoop house out of that stuff or something. Let's throw some ideas my way. Um, I don't even know. I still got to learn how to weld. I don't think I'd want to try on something that thin, you know. And Bordis, I miss, I miss my cat. He was my little fat boy buddy. And Zoe loved Bordis. They'd take naps together and Bordis would let her just chew on them and it didn't matter they were buddies it had to have been a coyote hey, he just didn't want to come in one night and he got like that he's fixed so he's not out you know trying to impregnate anything he just ever since he got fixed he just turned fat lazy I loved him to death never really been that much of a cat person I come from a cat cat loving family but I never had anything against cats, but he just had a special bond to me. Uh, I'm going to continue to hold out a little hope, but it's not looking good. It's just not. So anyways, I'm going to drink some more coffee. Sit here and enjoy the fire. Peace and quiet, minus the generator you hear in the background. For those of you who haven't, don't know, um, the RV that I bought this from the guy I bought it from took out uh, the propane to the water heater and the fridge he actually changed out to just an electrical fridge luckily he didn't take the propane out to the furnace so and I'll show the kitchen on the next one and I'm gonna keep working hard but yeah show throw me out your ideas and uh, 
on other things on as far as that top rail and other things I can do to prepare to be more self-sufficient besides stocking up you know which I already do so yeah oh, I love the fire all right everyone hey thanks for watching if you're not subscribed please do I'm getting so close to a thousand uh, last check I think it was 922 and I appreciate each and every one of you so much it's been awesome I'm loving doing this so I'm gonna keep on keeping on and we'll be back again soon Party one, take care and remember there's always money in the banana stand. Peace.